Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Thank you so much for coming back again to hear part two of a part one and part two uh, mini series, I guess you could say. But it's uh, it's kind of coming off of last week's episode. So if you missed last week's episode, you can find it right up here, actually up here on your screen if you're watching this on YouTube, but I will also be linking it in the podcast show notes for all you folks that are just listening and you need a point of reference to know what I'm talking about. But uh, last week's podcast, we uh, kind of started on this trend, of, as it were, of reading subscriber and follower comments on topics to discuss during the episode. And, you know, this uh, this last week's episode was about uh, <clears throat> what do practicing heathens do and some of the other follow-up questions that kind of, you know, came along with it there. Um, and as I mentioned in last week's episode, you know, I, I, I think that a topic like this would best be suited to have multiple voices heard, and that's what we have going on today. I've got several guests about to join us, some of whom I believe you already know from my content and some of whom you may know from outside of the podcast, but um, we're going to have, uh, or we're going to have Cliff Cliffordson and Patrick Walsh, who has been on the podcast a number of times. Um, they are both uh, kind of teammates when it comes to running the uh, the High Lung Spiritual um, Community Facebook group. Um, link for that's going to be down in the description and in the show notes as well, in case you haven't checked it out yet, and you want to know what I'm talking about. Um, but they got, you know, other moderators that that post content there all the time, but Patrick kind of founded it, and Cliff has been right there with him to do, like, live streams and stuff during during the week. And so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun to kind of watch their platform grow and, and become interactive and stuff over time. And in addition to those two gentlemen, we are going to have my dear friend, uh, my long-distance brother from another mother, Mr. Papa Olufsen, who you all know from Fjallvatir Workshop. He's also co-host of Talking with Heathens over at uh, Inner Demon Media. I will be linking stuff down in the description and show notes for you guys to check them out too. But he is on a, a, a weekly stream um, on YouTube and, and Facebook and I don't know where else. But uh, every, I think it's Wednesday night, they stream and uh, you can follow him during those broadcasts over there because he helps co-host that show called Talking with Heathens. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be following up today with those three guys. The four of us are going to just be sitting here talking today about um, what do practicing heathens do and some, some of the other follow-up questions or, or, or topics that kind of go along with that stuff since, again, I, I feel like there's more that can be discussed and talked about with more people. So I'm very excited to have these guys on the show here this week, and I hope you guys are excited to, you know, listen to what they have to say and, and maybe learn some things, what's, what's, what's what it's all about, you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't know, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome the guys into the show. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna ho get, go ahead and get this party started, and with oh, okay. this party, with this party, we've got several friends of mine, um, and, and a newcomer. Um, so welcome to the show. We got Cliff, we got Patrick, and we've got Papa. I'm going to let each of them kind of introduce themselves for all of the new listeners and, and people who maybe uh, aren't aware of who they are. But uh, yeah, so Cliff, would you mind just letting the people know who you are? And Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. I'm Cliff. I've been a Norse pagan for roughly three, four years. I've been a pagan most of my life. Um, I was raised in uh, uh, like a Jehovah's Witness background, actually. 
which kind of led my grandma to teach me things vice versa of of how christianity kind of works so that also kind of let me in on a lot of pagan ideologies that christianity carries and i think that's kind of helped me through my path but um i've been doing lives with patrick on on his page his high lung spiritual uh mental and spiritual page for a while um yeah that's cool thanks for coming on the show man um i know it was like a last minute thing for for us to to get a few people rounded up and really appreciate you being available no problem man anytime cool um patrick on to you buddy hey it's a me Welcome. again it's a me <laughs> yeah very happy to be here again and um as cliff has mentioned he's a uh, a very crucial part of my high long spiritual emotional support group i gotta think of a better name because that rolls off the tongue a little bit better but um <laughs> uh what he did mention though is we became um fast friends we uh i think we both joined the high look spiritual group around the same time back in 2020 and so. we started getting to know each other very well and then um very long story short we ended up uh decided to meet up with each other at his place and uh We've done it three times and we'll be doing it very uh, soon, shortly here. But um, I consider him brother and, um, you know, a very um, amazing person uh, to have in my life. And without him, you know, a lot of what I do wouldn't be quite that possible. Yeah. But yeah. Happy to be part of this uh, stream here. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have you back. You know, um, we've always had a good time, I feel, in, in past episodes. And now we've got an added element here you know to to enhance the dynamic so absolutely I'm looking forward to to what we get to talking about today and then um next but certainly not least is papa olifson and papa i will let you uh introduce yourself to everybody well it's an honor to be back on an episode of random heathen ramblings i'm papa olison you guys may know me from fjallvatir workshop or fjallvatir mountain spirit shamanism um, i practice appalachian animism sort of a, a flavor or a variety from the blue ridge mountains of north carolina beautiful yep and you know everybody's affiliations you know you're your sites, your shops, your groups, um, everybody check out in the description or the show notes, however, uh, or wherever it is where you're capturing this. Um, be sure to check out, you know, Cliff and Patrick's, uh, the High Lung Group, and of course, check out all of the amazing things that um, Papa releases through Fialvatir, uh workshop. He's got, you know, drums and other sorts of accoutrements for various spiritual um, practices, I guess, right? you know um, but what heathens do That's yeah what talking about tonight yeah you what know what heathens do Indeed. yeah what a, what a what an awesome segue yeah. we have uh we had a uh you know last week's episode at the time of this recording actually where we're just a day we're, we're, we're 24 hours in to the release of uh part one of what do practicing heathens do and um you know i i picked that topic or i picked that comment from russell last week uh uh kind of randomly you know just in in this in the spirit of of this podcast keeping it random and i found myself just kind of going what can i really talk about just myself about this because it's just one person's perspective or one person's you know what do heathens do and i and i it made, would be what heathen do not heathens yeah what does <laughs> this heathen do what does that yeah. do? yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, yeah. I'm even mentioned in that episode about how, uh, you know, if you get more people in a room, you know, we have four people in a virtual room right now, you get four folks together talking about something and you ask them the same question, each of them are probably going to provide different answers, you know. And, and I would guarantee we do a daily, like probably not necessarily daily, but at least a weekly thing that's completely different from each other. What yep. I found is neat about me and Patrick when we get together, or Patrick and I, I should say. Um, when we yeah, get man, together, keep it. This is a random podcast, but get your grammar right, man. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we, we, we don't have Appalachia in the house. We don't have, you know, Southerners in here or anything. Right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm hillbilly and I poor grammar. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't but, giving you 
like when Patrick and I get together, um, he has different ways that he does. So we're solitary practitioners, basically. We don't have a frith. We don't have a kindred that we go and do things with on a regular basis. So we're what we've learned during our past, you know, um, if I may speak for both of us at this moment. No, absolutely. You're good. But when we get together, we have things that mesh. They just automatically mesh because of the core belief system. So when we get together, we can have, it's, it's interesting because he brings things that I don't know. And I bring things that he don't know together. And we have, we, we basically, we usually do it like as a weekend thing. And we try to do it on um, uh, blocks. And we've had really good success just Patrick and myself doing things like that. And, you know, of course I have a fairly big family and my wife sometimes gets involved. Um, and, you know, a couple of friends that live around me that happen to be in the, be here at the time, but they're not necessarily Norse pagan or really anything. But mm. um, I think that's kind of neat how people can get together and with the, with the, the core ideology of what being a heathen is, and then having the little things that kind of branch off that and how they just kind of blend together. Um, that's one of the most amazing things that I've found out about, about the whole, just the ideology of heathen. Um, so let's, let's, let's start off with that then, because you, you mentioned, you know, core beliefs or, or core ideologies, right? A common ground, I guess is mm -hmm. another way that we could put it. And, uh, what, what, what would you say are core ideologies or fundamentals of being a Norse pagan or a Norse heathen or whatever other name you want to put to it? Well, I guess um, Blots is obviously something, you know, that, that we all kind of observe. Um, Blots and Sumbul and um, I, I, I kind of, Robert Sass was like a really big uh, influence to me. Because early on, when I was kind of just kind of just trying to scoop up anything I could from any source off the internet that I could when I was when I decided that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and in, like I said, it's really been in the last like five years. I've been for 20 years or so, I've kind of known some stuff about the runes. I've seen things and felt things in different ways that kind of sent me on this path. The spirit's guiding me, I guess, if you will. But uh, uh, Robert, when I found Robert Sass's works, uh, in in reading those, it kind of gives you a basic breakdown of how to do these things. Mm. So, with that, I found that Patrick and other friends of mine <clears throat> um, do things in basically the same way, like. Um, of course, other, I don't want to say other religions, but other, other pagan paths have similar rituals and similar ideologies about the core belief, uh, animism, I suppose you would call it. It's just like, it's a, it's the broad, um, umbrella term. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. So you uh, think that, uh, that, that some of the core parts of heathenry, uh, have animism that in place right there's there's a absolutely sense of our connection i think, to I think that's probably the main vein like the tap root of heathenry is animism itself is almost fundamental to just about any faith or belief because any faith or belief is going to incorporate a belief in a spirit or an idea of spirit sure sure absolutely especially what the um the lesser acknowledged, at least in the mainstream phases, our core um, focuses on, you know, our planet, our Earth, you know, the land that we reside in. And, you know, that I think that's a really beautiful set of as well as, you know, the creatures, too, you know, something that's not really focused on that much in the mainstream phase. Hmm. So you got, you know. Uh, Cliff, you mentioned, uh, you know, bloat and stumble as, as being like very common. Like that's, that's the religious side of things. At least that's how I like to look at it is mm -hmm. the religious side of it. How, you know, when you choose to um, 
interact or or have dealings with the sacred the gods um mm -hmm. and and whatever you know uh, representation of those those figures that you have you know for for i think from at least what we know um of of historical heathens and just as a quick side note you were talking about robert sass i've had him on this podcast before and uh i've learned a lot from him too and his his online group is is al sadu saxon heathenry and so one thing to always remember right is is when people are sharing that information and not that knowledge of, of where it's coming from or the angle that it's being approached from it's a very academic very scholarly you know uh, what does the historic source have to say about x y or z you know and um not that that's not everybody's cup of tea you know what i mean like not everybody yeah. feels like that's the approach that they want to take maybe they want to be a bit more loose with with things and they're not so historically focused on it and that's okay and that's part of my struggle that's been part of my struggle because i want i wanted to do things i want to do things in a historical manner where where okay these are what our ancestors have always done these things are whatever our ancestors have always done kind of approach to it um but at the same time it's really hard for me to go get nine goats and nine cow and nine pigs and kill them all in my backyard yeah it's not know. practical for the it, it's not practical times have changed i mean they did that out of necessity that was that was the way of life that was you know, how they fed their families but now we have grocery mm -hmm. stores and sure they had markets and things back then but you know, almost every every home was a working home or a farmstead of sorts sure so I guess my way around that is um, when, when we involve feasts with that, um, you know, when we have, when we cook a great meal for everyone, I will, uh, I will go get either a side of beef or a side of pork or whatever. And when I'm preparing it, I'll drain the blood off of that. And I will actually use blood in my blocks. Mm. Um, I think I that's for two and the, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt or no, anything. No, you're fine. Part taking up these, um, that's kind of like when we incorporate into our uh, our plots and celebrations that we've had together. You know, he rounds up the best things that he can manage to, you know, make it as historically accurate as possible, but within reason. You know, I, I've always admired that about the practice that we share as far as celebrations go. Anyway, back to you. I mean, I, I don't know Old Norse, so I can't I can't give prayer in Old Norse. Um, I'm not a I'm not a speech writer. I'm not really good at coming up with good prayers. You know, Patrick actually steps in with that. He's really good at that. Believe yeah. it or not, like, like if you pass Patrick the dime, he will come off with some stuff that's like, damn, mm -hmm. you just you just made it the thing, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, and and like I said, you know, I'm still young in this. I've not been doing this for a long time. Um, age wise, I'm 40, but I'm young as a pagan. Uh, young as a Norse pagan, anyway, heathen. Um, so I don't, I don't know. You know, I I look up to guys like you and like Papa Olsen, and uh, there's another friend of mine, Thor, who does uh, some YouTube channels. Uh, um, uh, I just drew a blank on his page, but I'll. I'm on the same mind too, though. Is uh, as Jesse and Papa, you both know as well that you two are very, you know, important. Um guides and teachers i know the term teacher could be very relative but um inspirations above all all three of you could include it you know and as sol as a solitary practitioner you know it's very helpful and imperative frankly to have people like you to aid me in this path you know while i celebrate by myself a majority of the time and often in those times, Jesse, I know you can know this, you know, that I'll send you like a few messages or, you know, yeah. just, you know, explaining that, you know, that reciprocation, that, that thanks, that connection that's been established over the years of, you know, following you guys, you know? Yeah, we've, I that's think a, a lot of us have, uh, yeah, go ahead, Papa, sorry. Practicing that way, it's real, it's organic, it's your connection to your practice, it's your connection to your ancestors or the deities. Um, if it's not your own, it's more or less just mimicking someone else's and therefore 
what's the point if you're not making that real um, connection there? So practice with purpose is very important to me. I think that's a, uh, a very excellent point. Something that I think that I'm saying my opinion, obviously, but I think that's a, a huge advantage that we hold in our practice and in our faith is, you know, it's just that, that connection. Sorry, I just drew a huge brain fart just now. <laughs> well, what I thought was No, me... it's, 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 it's by... Okay. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. I'll come back at it when I... So what I thought was neat about it was is, is, is Patrick sent me Jesse's way a long time ago, and I kind of blew it off. Um, I was following a couple other YouTubers at the time and quickly realized that they're full of shit. Um, just from personal experiences that I've had with, with, the, with, this, with my path, um, they instantly became bullshit. So I stopped following. And, and I got bored one day and was like, well, shit, Patrick's been trying to get me to listen to this guy jesse midgard whatever in the hell it is i don't know <laughs> so i checked him out and i watched a full episode and i was like this is exactly what it is it's rambling it's heathen and it makes sense so i started following i started religiously watching jesse after this point like every tuesday or every every yeah every thursday um uh i'm listening to in my earphones every day <clears throat> but um uh, it i that's how i found out about papa olson over here was because i saw him on an episode of random heathen ramblings and that's so cool. then i start checking out his velveteer workshop while jesse's plugging it and i'm like holy shit <laughs> like okay i i think i'm starting to find my people now because i've been making stuff like don't get me wrong papa's skill set is uh, uh, uh out of my realm especially the star kind of stuff you know <laughs> I, I i do really well with some of the stuff that i make but i like to make stuff out of bones i like to make stuff out of leather and i'm checking out papa stuff and i'm like oh man and i'm looking at my shit and i'm like fuck throw that scrap pile i'll tear that apart and make something else out of that later he's but, being uh, modest <clears throat> it's it's neat when you start finding your people i think mm. it's neat when you see people who are doing things and it's like, you know, I've took some inspiration from some of Papa's works. Um, I try not to steal anybody's artistic visions because uh, to me that's wrong. But um, uh, I, I thought it was neat. Some of the comparisons and the ideals that we have about bone art and, uh, and with making instruments and stuff from, from nature. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, you uh, you touched on something that I thought was a, a key thing to to hone in on was finding your people. And uh, I've talked a lot with others and uh, also just on this podcast, but how where, you know, the heart of heathenry is in the hearth and the heart of heathenry is is with your people. It's with community. It's it's building fellowship and building friendships which become like extensions of of your family you know people who you can rely on and and how that that takes interacting with one another and, and as far as like we talk about maybe some core fundamental parts of of of, of Germanic heathenry or Norse paganism I feel like that's one of the one of the real strong components that anybody here would probably agree with is that you know teaming up with people finding your community finding your extension of your home mm -hmm. i could definitely uh i'm sorry i didn't mean to interject there uh i couldn't agree more uh i finally retained my thought that i'll struggle with badly there for a second there but um is based on what papa was saying is this is making it our own you know something that's special and organic and natural rather than something that's been practiced for now i'm not saying that our practice wasn't practiced longer but since it's so mainstream so common so repetitive it loses this luster and i think it's beautiful that we have so many various ways of <clears throat> practicing something because i remember uh Jesse, uh, your first video was uh, how to perform a basic heathen ritual. And I'll tell you what, I watched a lot of videos 
on how to find the right one. I'm like, this guy is just for the likes. This guy is just clowning. This guy, it just wasn't my energy, but I eventually found it. And I think it's really cool that, you know, upon meeting you, I came across Matthew Petrie, another great guy. And then ultimately, you know, Papa Olsen, you know, but that's what's really cool is this, we offer so many different, you know, we contribute our own, you know, lifestyle to our practice and learn something and maybe incorporate it or to something to, you know, look back on, like, you know, maybe I'll incorporate it, maybe not, but it's something to appreciate, you know, and it may be contrary to your belief, it's something to, you know, ponder on and give appreciation to. So where we are in the world right now, we're all so connected. We're connected through the internet, through social media, uh, messenger services, phone calls, and things that are above and beyond what you would have seen in the year 500 or 250. Mm -hmm. So we've got this great, great connection. And along with it, it's almost just kind of folded in that if we all have this connection, we should all be doing the same things. And that's okay on a foundation, but practice is going to be different and it should be different. If we're talking about Norse paganism, let's look at the, the Nordic countries. You've got Norway, Denmark, Sweden, uh, Finland, and throw in Iceland after it was settled. Think about the size of that on the map geographically, and then fold that over and put it on top of where we are right now here in the United States. Think about the span. My life here is not even close to the life that somebody has living in Florida or somebody in New York or you guys out there in the Midwest. Um, our lives are going to be very, very different. Our surroundings are different. We might have that foundation, those fundamental beliefs, those ideologies, <laughs> the same pantheon, but our practice is going to be very, very different. And Sorry, go Sorry, go ahead. Three people shot at the same time. <laughs> I, I was actually watching a uh, a uh, a YouTube video today with my with my friend Thor on Norse magic and beliefs, and uh, I know did, what you're talking about. He he did a short with uh, someone named um, Karen Kempa. He has a middle name in there, and I don't re quite remember what it was, but I thought it was neat because her last name is really close to mine. But that's not what actually attracted me to listen to the entire, you know, almost hour of, of, of YouTube video. But she touched on something like that, Papa. It was like um, her her lineage comes from Scandinavia, but it's about where where you kind of grow at. Like you might be born with the spirit in you of, of that type of religion. And when you pick up on that and you and you begin to act on it, you kind of tend to gravitate towards your surroundings. Like the Sami people, I, I guess she was like Finnish and um, Swedish, and they kind of go hand in hand. But she made the point that um, the the Sami people use drums uh, primarily, as, as I understand it, for their spiritual practice. And she doesn't necessarily use drums, but she's in, in Western Florida. She has two giant alligator bones, and that's how she kind of does her, her medicine, her trance state that she gets into. She uses alligator bones that she bangs together. Huh. Uh, so that kind of goes into, you know, like your surroundings, where you're at, where you, where you kind of grow up at, or where you grow as a heathen at or a pagan at. Yeah, your practice is going to be different. It would have been the same way for our ancestors. Like I said, if we go back to the year 500, 250, whatever, you walk into a village, if they're on the seaside, they're going to venerate the god of the sea, the ocean. Um, they're going to have a fishing lifestyle. They're going to uh, think about things like fair weather, um, strong sailcloth, uh, nets. But then you go into a village that's into the mountains, far away from the seaside. They're going to be more toward... Um, the hunt and outlasting the winter and things like that. It's going, your practice is going to be different village to village 
And then even still, it's going to be different household to household in that village. Yes. Yeah, that's a very important thing I'd like to to always bring back to is because, you know, uh, I'm I'm like I liked a lot of the the stuff that uh, uh, I also do Robert Sass's um, group, you know, going back to historical sources and and learning why it was done a certain way back then and then taking inspiration from that and building it into that now, but always keeping it in context, right? Knowing that it was done back then for a specific reason. And again, the why, the purpose was was there. Um, matter of fact, like the Scandinavian countries that became Hagen in their in their beliefs, they 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 adopted that themselves from their southern neighbors, the the, the Germanic continental places you know what i mean because they migrated north into scandinavia so they brought with them those those ways and then the the northerners were kind of customizing it to depending on if they were danish or whether they were swedish or if they were a uh, norwegian or an icelander or you know it, it kind of it, it changed over time and that's one thing i think that people listening and, and watching should remember is that you know just because you come into this particular path of you know Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, whatever umbrella term we want to apply to it, there are there are so many things about this 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 way, and we can, you almost see we can't even say it that it's a universal way. But if you if you find you know an attraction to learning more about you know the Germanic gods and goddesses, that pantheon of things, your your practices and even the practices of the people who you find a family with, in a way are going to evolve and change over time. You know, you're not going to do the same things in five years that you're doing today. Sure. You're going to remove some things. You're going to add some things. You're going to change some things around. It's constantly, you know, growing and evolving with us as, as individuals. And then individuals who come together formulate a sort of body in and of itself. And that body grows and changes and evolves and matures and learns things along the way too, right? Absolutely. I think the, the question itself that we're talking on, it throws a lot of people off. Like, how do you practice? Or mm -hmm. as a practicing heathen or pagan, what do you do? For some reason, some way our mind always wants to go to, what can I give as an answer? So you start thinking about things like bloat, um, sumble, uh, ritual, like we had mentioned early on uh, in the discussion, those those things, ritual that occur as an answer, but really your practice is your day to day. Uh, believe it or not, and it's always been that way. Look back at the ancestors; their practice was through their work. It was through song. It was through storytelling. It was through sharing meals together. That was practice. And it still is for us. We just don't think about it that way. We don't consider it. We want to think of those, well, what are the big things that make us different or set us apart? What do we do different? A lot of us are doing a lot of the same things. So we are very similar in practice. We just might have a different meal on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, someone uh, who wants to observe a historical heathen holy tide, like Sigur Bloat or Winter Nights or Yule or maybe a disting, you know, in the springtime or something, you know, uh, how are you going to observe it is going to vary from person to person, tribe to tribe, kindred to kindred. I mean, again, similarities, nuances, but specifics are going to be unique to that the approach that the, that that person or those people have or how they want to express it i have actually okay. oh sorry go ahead, Patrick. Go ahead. thank no, you, you um, go ahead. i was gonna say um i hope it's okay saying this but something i've noticed a lot and as pop i'm very happy you mentioned that is you know the day-to-day -day practice rather than the holy tides and the special moments it's like that's something that i overlook a lot and sharing meals and company and, you know, song telling and whatnot. It's something that's, you know, very overlooked and becomes such common practice, like simple as sharing a meal that I don't want to say this, but it will it kind of loses the sacredness until those, you know, sacred days do arrive, mm -hmm. such as, you know, our blots or anything yeah. else like that, you know. 
Well, there's a stanza from the Havamal that I would like to throw out there. It's not on practice, but it can be translated to practice. When we're talking about these big things like bloat and symbol and those other ritual type things are a part of practice, but we forget the little things. So not great things alone must one give to another. Praise often is earned for little with half a loaf and a half turned bowl of one me plenty of friends. It's the little things. It's the little things that we do. It's your day to day that make up your practice, not just what you went to or what holy Todd you observed or when you held feast day. It's all those little things in between as well. Ah. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Oh, yeah. Because that's 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 what really defines us as a, in our practices. I am I'm terrible with reciting verses or, or stanzas like verbatim or close to it. But, you know, there, there's another thing in the Havamal about giving gifts and, and it's better to not give at all than to overgive or something like that. Right. Um, Papa, you might can help out close out that 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 particular stanza if you have it, but it's it's along that vein, you know. It's better to to not give or to get you know give less than, than to over sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so it it, it kind of follows in that same topic or that that same spirit of of do it with sincerity, do it with sure. purpose rather than just you know, I, I alluded to this last week about, you know, oh, well, I, uh, let me just crack open a Red Bull and pour it out for Thor. Like, come on, dude, like, give me, a, give me a break. Because like, that's <laughs> what I've got in the fridge, right? Like, yeah, a Red on, Bull of all things. you could do better than that, you know, and I, I, yeah. I say that I, I use that example, because that was literally what somebody at one point in my life told me that they did as a, as a gift to Thor. And I'm like, Ah. excuse me <laughs> i remember watching a video where you said something about that you I, it may have been may or may not have been the very first time that you brought that up but i remember seeing that and i just was like oh no yeah, you know you just face palm like oh, yeah man. that you were just mentioning <laughs> um, a penny from a poor man means more than a hundred from a rich man and when yeah. you're giving what you have versus giving over the top just because you can you lose like jesse mentioned uh, the word sincerity it loses its meaning it loses its value by overvalue it's like blinding oh. sorry go ahead patrick yeah you remember when we first met how what what i did the the just the little the little thing that i did Oh geez, uh, you prepared me uh, a meal. Uh, no, 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 no. Before that, before that, before that. Long I, before that. I remember first pulling up to your place and just walking in. Long before that. Before that, jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my head to refresh me. Okay, so at one point, I had gotten into. Um, I've been in the leather work for a while. Oh off yeah. Off and on for probably twenty years or so. And I would set it down for five, 10 years and I'd pick it back up for, you know, a year or two. Well, I got into making moccasins at one point and oh, the moccasins. A, about okay. the same time I, I ran across high lung, just out of the blue, it popped up on my YouTube. So I instantly became hooked on high lung. So I started searching stuff on Facebook and I ran across this group, ran across this gentleman right here. Uh, Patrick and he he would pour his heart out almost almost uh I, I I couldn't fathom you know I was like this is a this is a hell of a human being here I want to know this guy yeah being really vulnerable and yes and exposing yes. the most raw parts of himself yeah yes that's the that's that's what I was looking for um so I reached out to him became friends with him and I'm like I've been I've been making moccasins for a little while and I want to send you a pair. I don't know why I'm just compelled to make you a pair and send them to you to help you. I don't know whether to help you ground or to help you walk. It may be, it may not do anything for you. I don't know, but I just felt compelled to send him a gift, you know, a gift of friendship. Yeah. And that's kind of how I started mine and Patrick's relationship. And then from there, it's just went, 
you know full blossom yeah it's went big like we're so, brothers your friendship even though even though i don't really necessarily crap or anything like that i always tell cliff constantly i'm like man i i can't do this or that but i'll offer you know my friendship and my love my support and my you know connections more or less i mean i hate to say it but i'm gonna say it you know having jesse and you know inevitably pop up in my corner brought them to you so that of itself i consider a gift having the right people that's gifts exactly you know, that's and what that's I was going to say. Patrick's a gift giver and doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he doesn't craft well, anything, but he does. That a lot of us have in common in terms of uh, those foundations or fundamentals of practice that we don't think about that we share in uh, the gift exchange uh, being one. It's uh, pretty across the board. It's something that many different varieties of paganism uh, participate in. And it's a great tradition. It's a great uh, bonding exercise and practice uh, for fellowship. A few of those other things that we might all share in terms of what do practicing heathens do, um, ancestral veneration, whether you, you like your forebears or not, whether they were good or bad or however your relationship is with your family, bottom line is you're alive today because they did what they did. They've, in one way or another brought you into this world. So you are connected to them, again, whether you like it or not. And then yep. um, our connection with the earth and the spirits, because just the same as our forebears are responsible for our life here today, the things of the earth and the plants and the animals are responsible for our continuance of life. Sustenance. Yep. Here on earth, our sustenance, exactly. And so we, we see those things. It's a very logical approach to faith and belief. We honor and we venerate those things that give us life. That's our, our ancestors and the things that we uh, take in to continue living each day. I liked how, uh, you know, Cliff, you, you talked about one of the first interactions or, re, you know, one of the things that kind of sparked or started yours and Patrick's uh, friendship was it started with a gift. Uh, a token mm -hmm. of love, you know, a token of friendship, some sort of gesture or item, whether it's a good piece, you know, goods or services, whatever. And that's, you know, maybe new pagans coming into to heathenry or are intimidated by, well, what can I give to this God, this thing, you know, this, this spirit, you know, how do I do it? What do I do? Um, Absolutely. That's you know, who's, 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 who's the one that's going to answer that? You know, because again, we, we we could each give our own. Well, here's what I do. Here's what he does. Right? Here's what they do. It goes back to it all. It's you find that yourself. That's that's one of the things about that I've come to learn within heathenry is 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 the genuine the genuineness of it, the sincerity of it, is is where your individual cultic practice is going to become stronger. And without that individual cultic practice, you may you may as well just stop trying to pursue heathenry any further because everybody does things so differently in terms of like what we're talking about you've got to have your own yeah. cultic practices whatever they are you've got to establish that first before thinking on a bigger scale or or moving on to the next chapter i feel you know what i mean exactly and it could be easy to get lost especially in towards the beginning of my journey it's like I was mentioning, just look, at there's so many different, you know, videos and finally finding that one match. And it's important to stay rooted to yourself and that quest that you're pursuing, whether it be, you know, this path that we follow as a heathen or pagan, whatever term you're comfortable with. But uh, something I often preach a lot, as I know, Cliff and Jesse, you guys heard me talk about this a lot, but um, what I carried from the start of this practice and I will do to my last breath is carrying the best of intentions and within reason you know as, as far as making an offering or gift giving you know you got I feel obligated to do something in exchange and I feel that's um, very overlooked as far as the new practitioner goes because you want to go above beyond like man I want to find the most expensive bottle of wine I can get Mm -hmm. Or, man, I want to find the most badass plant to, you know, to plant 
in honor of in veneration of my gods and my ancestors and the plights that they went through. You know, it's just like a you know, one-upness. People almost try to like one up each other with with things like that. Well, I think there's I I think there's some place for that. Um if if somebody, you know, gives me a gift, then the, the value of that gift is placed upon by me, you know. If someone made me an item and it was a handmade item and it took them 20 minutes to make it because they're really good at what they do and they and they they craft out a, a, an amazing item for me um i don't care that it took them 20 minutes i don't even need to know that that thing's value is way more than the time it took for them to do it or the material the cost it's it's the gesture right and so what i see that i'm gonna go well that thing is is valuable to me at this level, right? Now I need to match or exceed that in exchange for that. And whatever I can do, whether it's a continuous, you know, effort or whether it's an item itself or something like I, I find myself wanting to outdo the giver in a way, you know, to try and match that. And, you know, it, I think there's some, you got to be careful with it. Because again, you can get to be too vain with the idea sure. of it's, it's the material, you know, that, 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 that outweighs the, the, the by thy getting measure thy gift there you go there you reciprocate you know based on the value of what you've received yeah and like jesse just said you place um, value on that gift i know that sounds kind of funky but um imagine we're all gentlemen here uh in this conversation if someone were to gift you a box of feminine hygiene product <laughs> it's a gift, but it's not going to have a whole lot of value to you it's not really something that uh, that you use or that you uh, would need. Unless my wife and daughter were in need of those things. Well, that would be a different story. But if the gift yeah. is it would be, it's intended. Then for, it would be something of great value to me. Well, we can always do something with something. But if the gift yeah. is intended for you, you would almost feel that it's a slight or an insult, like a, a joke. <laughs> Uh, to get something that there's the other side of that <laughs> don't use or can't use as a gift so again that value and uh, what you're giving so think about it um, be honest about it be genuine about it uh, in what you're offering or um, when you perform sacrifice or if you practice sacrifice uh, what it is that you're working with I wanted to mention something and, you know, we, we're talking so much about similarities and, and uh, things that someone could maybe point to as saying, what do heathens do? What do practicing heathens do? How do they worship? We, we've hit so many things on the head with comparisons and similarities. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to maybe push the envelope a little bit and and touch on something that we probably won't necessarily all agree on and just kind of see where we all sit on it. And okay. along the topic of dogma and uh and and where that fits into into heathen practices because i see a lot of folks that um have this idea or this notion that it's 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 a free for all uh you know heathenry is is like we were talking about it's 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 more about the 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 intention and then your purpose behind it all of which are are certainly valid and and necessary components to to being what I would consider, I guess, you know, a good heathen, right, or, or someone who is is in touch with their spirituality and the religiosity behind it. Um, but where do you guys see, or where do you guys sit on the the content or the concept of some things just have to be done a certain way, and there is no other way about it? You know, where do you guys sit on that? I don't whoever wants to go first, but the the the, the dogmatic element where where we see so much more in maybe Abrahamic religions or other uh, uh, monotheistic beliefs where it's a hey, sacred law says thou shalt not do X, Y, Z. And if you do, you're in big trouble. Where do you see if that, if that fits within I think polytheism? That's it is because we don't have that. We don't have those um, same religious texts like the Bible or the Quran or whatever that lays it out for you that this is, the way that it's done, how it should be done, and anything else is wrong. Um, the text that we do have 
offer several variations of those important things. Um, you've got historical references that you can go to that will say, this is celebrated on this date by the lunar calendar. This is celebrated on this date based on something else. Neither are wrong, neither are right. It's what they were doing where they were in the time. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as dogma goes, I don't know, um, to have a doctrine, a lot of, like you said, Jesse, a lot of these people get the idea that it's a free for all. Um, it's absolutely not. Our ancestors, and you go back to old Scandinavia, prided themselves on order and law and mm -hmm. structure. And they were the first government in the world. They founded parliament in Iceland. Yeah. So it was very important. Yeah. You had outlaws, you had inner yard, outer yard, um, people that would be banished for, for that. Yeah. For four very specific things like dishonoring the gods or blaspheming the gods if you want to use that term right if if you talk shit about the gods there are sorry they go ahead they didn't want that they didn't want that um no. wrath to come back on them they didn't want that negative energy that negative vibe because you had insulted the gods so you're going to pay the consequences for that and they didn't want to catch it second hand so uh, yeah there is it's the, this Loki thing and this chaos thing and it's everybody yeah. just do whatever you want get out of here with that it was never the way that it was it's never the way that it's been um, balance is the order of the cosmos not chaos yeah I mean it's a it's it's there it exists so to acknowledge it I think that's about as far as it goes at least for for me or what I've come to learn is it exists you can't ignore it you've got to deal with it and you got to get through it um what bothers me the most is that people can't be happy with its existence. They have to promote it and create it to remind everyone else that it exists. Yeah. So then you get into edge lording, and I'm going to be a troll, and <laughs> I'm going to do this, and was it Rocketru or? Yeah. I have not heard that yet. What is Rocketru? Oh, it's Rocket the generation of Loki's offspring, I believe. I oh, fuck. I think. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. So you're, Sorry. you're Loki. No, it's, a, I mean, real, real recognizes real, dude. I mean, that's pretty much kind of how I looked at it too. I was like, why would you even, because, you know, in any culture, doesn't even have to be Germanic or Norse or whatever, but in any, in any culture, um, look at Native American or indigenous natives of, 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 you know the american continent they have their coyote you know he exists that spirit that 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 wily sort of chaotic thing exists and at least in many tribal uh cultures i think it's i don't want to speak on behalf of uh of a tribe any or whatever but they 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 recognize it but you don't hear about these people like doing a drum circle or dancing for the coyote you know there's just like no leave that son of a bitch alone he's <laughs> He serves a purpose. He does a thing, oh, but we're not going to. I lost my internet connection. No, you didn't. Well, if you did, you're back. I can hear you. We okay. can see you. Maybe you guys didn't lose me, but you guys it. paused. They miss it me. because the coyote is just doing what's natural to it. Yeah. It wants to eat. It wants to survive. Um, humans at that point had started um, cultivating, raising livestock. They would keep chickens, keep animals, whatever. The coyote would see that meal, go get it. So the coyote's just living his life. But to the people, he was troublesome. He was a bother. He was right. mischievous, um, stealing, uh, taking away from. But then you get the people that want to mimic the coyote, not for just living, but because he was troublesome. You want to be troublesome to... Yeah mimic that aspect of the coyote so you're missing it completely yep. by trying to do this and this is this is where this is where i have to come in because papa is absolutely right on this the first animal that came to me um when i decided this is what i was going to do with my path was the coyote there was literally a coyote that walked across the street while we were driving the neighborhood the first day we moved in here and i decided okay, well, we're not moving around anymore. I can actually set up a spiritual place in my backyard for practice. The coyote was the first animal that I saw, and it was a big son of a bitch. I'm telling you, it was as big as a German shepherd, and it walked right through our neighborhood. Mm. 
And then the first several things that came to me were of coyote. There were there was a coyote headdress that I found that a guy was it was at a they they have a cover bridge festival where I'm from. It's the home of the cover bridge festival. And there was a fur trader there and he had a coyote hat and it was a decent coyote hat and it was cheap. And I was like, I need, I need a fur. I love this hat. And I bought it. And then several coyote skulls have came to me over time um, on canoe trips and stuff like that, that I've taken um, just random stuff along the Creek, uh, the creeks around here. So the coyote, and, and I never really thought of it as like a character of chaos. I just, you know, the coyote is like a creature of um, of uh, opportunity, I, I guess. You know, he mm. to me, a coyote would jump on an opportunity if he's seen it, whether it would be eat or breed or um, even wander, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the the ideology of a coyote being a creature of chaos is the way Papa explained it made sense, but I never thought of it like the coyote was a creature of chaos. We see most the- of my most of my ritual stuff is made from coyote. They're abundant around here. So, and another thing, when you um, dismiss those other things and you want to be on the idea of chaos and free for all, you forget that <clears throat> you're also kind of spitting in the wind toward Tear, uh, Forsetti, uh, these established ideas and spirits that we have for justice and law and fairness. Yeah, because again, there was a, it was a society built around order. And, and even, even the early Germanic tribes knew this. You know, we, they, they had very certain and specific <clears throat> laws in place to keep order. And if you violated it, then... You know, it was it was a, it was a different time, you know, and that's one of the things of about historical heathenry mm-hmm. that I always, you know, admonish people on is like bear in mind of what was going on at the time and how how the world was at the time. You know, if something was bad, you would either cut it off, cut it out, extinguish it. Right now, we've got other means. Like, there's other ways of of dealing with things where you don't just have to kick somebody out of a group or outlaw them, as it were. Right there's we're not living in those times anymore. So the, the context is important to, to understand. And if people get too wrapped up in the, the, the historical fascination of it and go, well, that's what I want to do now. 100% all the time, exactly that way. Again, not telling everybody how to live or how to do their thing, but just kind of realize that it could be going on uh, treading on dangerous territory there. Cause again, it doesn't, doesn't align with, where we are as a as a species as 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 a, as a society you know some of of- become irrelevant and so it lacks purpose there you go purpose yeah. what you're doing. kind of pull back into what you're saying it's like uh core beliefs are things that cannot be really negotiated or compromised in my opinion it's a few things is um honoring of the gods that should go without saying you know different pantheons so like a good friend of mine she's very eclectic she practices various different faiths and whatnot me i can't do that i'd be very disoriented and conflicted with the energies but um the things that i can't go back on is you know honoring of the gods specifically the norse gods and then of course honoring our ancestors and then um just being an overall good person. But again, I'm not as well versed as you guys in that regard. And I'm doing my best to contribute to this conversation when I can. Yeah, you're doing but, great. Um, yeah, I can say the, this, but uh, those core things, is, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, is just carrying the best intentions and what, what you're pursuing, what you're, you know, chasing after and what you're wanting, wanting to embody. I think those are the cores that you can't dismiss is, you know, the gods, our Mm -hmm. tribe, our family, our ancestors, and above all, our surroundings, our mother, Yord, our earth, the Mm -hmm. land which we lay. And that's another thing. This is kind of going a complete 180 from everything. But it's one of the things I really admire and love that you guys created the Sacred Trail Society is that incorporates something very fundamental 
because I feel like with years coming, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And people like us, it's going to keep that, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Keep that life force going to keep that heart beating is to contribute what we can. That's Inevitably, so it may not work out. But anyways, I'll let you guys take the floor here. No, I totally get it. That that counterweight on the scale, and that's important. Um, Jesse's talked about tradition before and worthy tradition. Um, some tradition isn't, but um, things like respecting the place that we live, it's important to be that counterbalance or counterweight to the way that we've shifted as a society. We've become very busy people. Uh, so we don't take the time to clean up after ourselves like we used to. It's not important anymore the way that it used to be. Um, we don't think about water the same anymore because we can go to six, seven, 10 different locations in our home and twist a knob and out comes clean drinking water. Whereas exactly. 50, 60 years ago, even some places here in Appalachia now, you have to walk to get water and then you have to filter it yourself. Uh, so we don't appreciate water the same. And that's about as basic as it gets is water. <laughs> Um, you wouldn't go and take a dump in your well just because it's an easy oh, seat. No. Mm. You know, because it's an easy way, it's an easy seat. You wouldn't go take a dump in your well, you know. So why would you throw, you know, crap out of your window that's gonna, you know, dump use motor oil next to your well pit? That doesn't make any sense. You know, why would you do that? You know, why would anyone do that? But that's essentially what we do by masks, water bottles garbage all this crap that you like we go walking like there's woods near me and there's a there's a, it's not necessarily a trail it's more private property but when i hit that place back here there's kids that go back there and mess around all the time and you find you know monster cans water bottles i don't, I don't even want to go into everything that you find back there because <laughs> it may it may get us a ban from youtube for a week or two <laughs> but right <laughs> But Pretty you dicey. find all kinds of shit back here. I'm like, just why? Well, stop leaving that stuff. Pick it up. If you're there and it's not yours and you have a way to pick it up, it's a safe way to pick it up, pick it up. I mean, I've I've found, you know, uh, hard drug use items down there where kids play on the damn beach. You yeah. know, um, it was early spring, thankfully, and it was the, the waters were still low before they rise with spring rain and flushed everything down. But still, there was some stuff I found down there that was not good. You know, if someone wants to take their kids down there fishing and they let their kids go play and they find this stuff, they, you know, they could have something really bad could have happened to them. And, you know, it's, it's, I, I think that might be a lot of it too is, is people just, they don't, just, they just don't think, they don't care. They We've don't lost think our about connection. stuff like that. We've lost our connection. So we don't care about it anymore. It's not important anymore. I can throw my shit here because I'm not trying to garden here. I don't care what I dump in the water because that's my drinking water. So it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me directly. So I don't have to care about it. It doesn't have to be important to me. I've got all these other things that I'm already worried about anyway. We've lost that connection to care and make an effort to keep it up. Sure. Responsibility, right? Custodianship. Yeah, Sorry, I got did it again. <laughs> no, no, I dare yeah. say it might take a time for us to be forced into that situation to really appreciate what we don't have. And it could be as simple as like a blackout from like a lightning storm or what have you. But I think most of us, if not all of us, should seize a time and opportunity to appreciate those things that our ancestors, um, you know, relied very heavily on. And that's one of the things I appreciate about uh, a lot of things you mentioned, uh, Jesse, is when you go for your walks. Like when I came to visit you, we went down to the river. We went barefoot because a majority of our ancestors didn't have footwear to accommodate us or bug spray, which I wish I brought that day. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but still, though, it's really... I think it's very important mm -hmm. to be humble and often sometimes humiliated and being ill-prepared for such things. It's like when I went to visit you, Jesse, um, when my GPS crapped out on me mm -hmm. and then my car started to crap out on me as well. It's like, I was like, man, oh man, this is really skeet. 
this is not cool. But then all the while, in the spirit of what I was doing, I'm like, man, I can only imagine what my ancestors were going through through like a freak rainstorm or whatever situation that you can imagine to get into between your destination, what you're trying to do. But something again, it's just, I really want to bring that appreciation and, you know, capture the opportunity to give thanks to something we take for granted for every day. And that also goes into spiritual practices like sharing a meal, sharing company and things like that. There's a tremendous amount to be said for uh, just the simple act of uh, spending that time together, fellowship. Yeah. Because we and don't do it anymore. No. We're just zoned out. It's to go watch a sports event or to watch an entertainment thing or a movie. Or There's even even just going out to eat. I mean, like here in the United States, it's everything's, you know, how do you get this person who's sitting in this seat in and out quickly so that the next 15, 20, 30 people can come in? And bring in money for that business and, and whatnot, which I get it. Like that, that's, that's a component, and yeah. but it, it it it's the the meal, sitting down, sharing company, conversation. That's still something very rich in a lot of cultures in this world. It's mm. not that rich here in this country. Well, I love unfortunately. unfortunately, yeah, it's very uh, money oriented. I know this first and foremost working in the food industry. You know, we give all the accommodations necessary to make it you know pleasant. But also at the same time, like, okay, hey, how's your meal doing? And then like 10 minutes later, I'm back. Hey, your plates are empty. Can I grab that tray? This very simple hints like, hey, get out of here. I got to take the next customers and whatever the fuck. But sorry, where the heck? Paying customers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gentlemen, can we take a small pause? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll hear a word from our sponsors. Wink, wink. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back here after a short break. Right. I'm good. And we are back. Uh, back with Papa Olofsson, back with Cliff, back, back with Patrick. Going over a lot of stuff, um, mainly focused on the, uh, the do's of heathenry. Uh, what do practicing heathens do? Um, a thought that I had, guys, that I thought maybe we could... Uh, in, in, in this next segment of the episode is what are some things that heathens don't do what are just like some you know we talk about like fundamental uh core values of heathenry the things that we do do you think that there's a the paradox to that or the opposite to that where there are things that we just simply don't do or we don't allow say, it i would say yes but these are more of uh, ideals in that regard and this is, again, speaking from my own personal opinion, I will not speak on anyone else's other behalf. But for me, it's respecting other beliefs. Because we don't want to make that same mistake and fall up on that hate fuel agenda that the mainstream religions carry. Because we live in modern times. I'm not going to kick or hate any of my ancestors because they're of, you know, Catholic or Christian, or whatever branch of that, you know, tree, in a sense. I think it's, it's not right. You know, we live in new times. We need to make new adjustments and new behaviors. And while it's great to venerate and praise our, our path, it's also important to pay homage to the roots, especially me living in a household with my father and his uh, girlfriend, you know, they're Catholics and I love and respect them all the same as a fellow heathen like you guys. You know, they're people who are in my life. They give me a roof to to live under. They provide me food and shelter. I mean, I'm in no position, nor would I even if I was in that position, I wouldn't take it. Because we we love each other and we support each other regardless of what we practice. And I mean, it would be a great world that we live in to, you know, incorporate all beliefs and all people. But and this is not the world that we live in. But yeah, this, as far as don't do is uh, hate on other beliefs, but more importantly, don't hate on each other, especially newcomers. When you're new into this faith, it's as all of us have mentioned at one point or another, it's very intimidating and scary. But being that one beacon of support and understanding <clears throat> as I have with the group that I created, 
on Facebook. It's just being loving, understanding, but also, you know, a little diligent as to, you know, who comes and who goes on that, on that path, mm-hmm. you know, correct them as needed and that kind of thing. Anything else from don't, don't do is I'd say, you know, you know, I'll talk about other faiths, other pagans. And then I'd say, I want to say don't be neglectful, but in a way I've been that way recently, just been lost my own headspace. And that's kind of why I go into uh, my group is, you know, that's what's intimidating about creating a mental health group is, you know, Mm. not being more mindful and considerate of that plight and uh, open the doors to that kind of thing. But anyways, that's going off topic there. But yeah, as far as don'ts, Sue, that's what I have to say as far as don'ts. I would say don't follow blindly. Uh, A lot of the major world religions ask you to follow blindly. You're not really allowed to ask questions. You're not supposed to ask questions. If something seems off, you get in trouble for calling it out or bringing it to attention that, hey, this doesn't add up. Uh, So don't follow blindly. I, I think that's something that is across the board in all walks of paganism is to be inquisitive, be curious, uh, seek knowledge, find your truth, find answers, um, study and learn and experience for yourself instead of experiencing through what someone else is telling you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would like to touch on real quick while we're on here is that it's not a Christian carryover to, um, say I'm a Thor's man or I'm for Odin or to dedicate yourself to a deity. I don't get into the whole um, spouse God thing, but there are many cults and communities throughout history that would uh, in paganism dedicate themselves to a particular deity. You don't have to, that's a personal preference, just the same as it is okay to go across the board. Um, You could go into a household a thousand something years ago, and they're going to have some sort of dedication uh, to air set up. Uh, Someone in the household is sick and you could come back the very next week and it's changed. Now it's for Thor. And they would explain it. Yes. We're offering to Thor and asking for uh, help in that strength to get through the healing. And then a year later, you could come back to the same homestead and they've got something there set up to uh, Freyr. Uh, Everybody's well in the house, but we're ready to try for another child. So uh, we're looking for some help with fertility. Um, So it would be different. It would change. And by household, not just by village, not just by country, not by region. Sure. Absolutely. I make a joke sometimes, like piggybacking off of Apple. Like we have an app for that. Like paganism is, we have a God for that. (laughs) Of war, wisdom, fertility, Uh, And that's how they were practiced with. Um, It was out of necessity with that intent and that purpose. If it was uh, planting season, if it was harvest season, if it was the hunt. uh, Sure. You would have different things going on, you know, at your your altar space or your hearth for that. I made a comment early on. I made a comment early on about like, uh, and, and when I say this, it usually people look at me strange when I'm like, my grandma was Jehovah's Witness, and that's how I learned about, he, you know, paganism, heathenry. And uh, Papa brought up a point of, uh, that that made me think of, it, it reminded me of how I ended up going about it like that. When I was eight years old, I'm 40 now, and when I was eight years old, they were, they asked my grandma not to bring me back to the uh, Kingdom Hall, which is yeah. what they call their church. Yeah. Kingdom uh, Hall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They asked me not, <laughs> they asked me not to come. They asked her not to bring me back to the Kingdom Hall because there was things that just didn't add up. And at eight years old, I started asking questions and I got pissed the elders off. And rather than trying to uh, coach me into their ways, they were just like, you know what? That kid's too much of a free thinker. Get rid of him. Yeah, asking too many questions. We don't, we don't want him in here. Eight years old. I'm like, I, I remember when she told my mom that. Uh, of course, my mom, she was a, she was kind of sort of practicing Wicca at the time. 
she grew up in the kingdom hall also but she hippie and she was a hippie years you know yeah so uh she was kind of the same generation dude i get it yeah so she was kind of doing her own thing at the time and she was like well that doesn't surprise me any and then there went you know that you know that was out the window of course you know i've been i've been uh involved off and on you know a lot of my life with other different um aspects of christianity and stuff but that was really the kid that's that thing's always stuck with me um most of my life and then when i started like full throttle i guess you could say practicing heathenry um that (laughs) that that just it, it just it just really that resonated with me when papa was explaining that you know the the uh I hope, I, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I want to piggyback off what Cliff was saying. Is something that really stood out most beautifully about this heathen practice that I've been following is that open acceptance for the most part. Obviously, you're going to have very different people and whatnot. But after many years of dabbling and experimenting and learning about other faiths, from my experience from this faith is, you know, been very welcoming and accepting from all walks of life. Even if you don't still practice this path, I feel like there's this, that, that openness and that welcoming, unless you've burned your bridges for messed up reasons, but you know, right. And that's kind of why I kind of reference back into the high lung group and high lung in general. And what I love about their message is this, you know, we are all people, you know, beasts and trees stone and wind it's just we all stand together in the same plight in the same planet that we dwell in and you know being part of that experience you know people looking past my physical difference was a huge thing for me being you know embraced as you know patrick rather than a former christian or Mm -hmm. someone with a birth defect i'm looked at as like what you see now yeah a 37 year old crazy guy from St. Pierce, Missouri, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, from the show me, from the show me state, well, you certainly, sure. you certainly do show us, man. You show out, I feel like you show up, <laughs> not show out like in a bad way. Cause usually when you say somebody's showing out, it's almost like they're, 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 they're too much or they're extra, a bit obnoxious, yeah. but, but you're showing up, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're doing things that I believe can be counted towards your gift frame, your reputation, what you're known for, how you're known by others as, you know what I mean? And for it within heathenry, right? Gift frame is very important for, Absolutely. I think a lot of us, you know, because with, with, that is the one thing that will not die when cattle die, kinsmen die and everybody else dies. The one thing that we know as part of that, that, that famous stanza of the Havamal, right? The, the, the one thing I know that will not die is the reputation or the fair fame of one who has, who has earned it, you know? And how do we earn that fair fame? How do we earn that reputation? We do things. We do. We are doers. Hail the doers. We are Hail. our deeds. You know what I mean? It's not about how, you know, how many followers you have on a platform. It's not how many likes you get on a, on a, on a post, you know what I mean? All that's superficial and it, and it means in the grand scheme of things, nothing. Uh, what really matters is what are we doing, you know, for ourselves, for those that are near and around us. Cause that's, you know, I, we, we talk about, you know, the things that heathens the practicing heathens do is we, we care about that. We care about the, what we give, not just for ourselves now, but what the future can glean from us it's about the quality you know? that you're giving too. The quality yeah exactly absolutely that's like i've seen pages start and they're in a ten thousand, you know ten thousand subscribers within like three months and mm-hmm. usually most of what's on there is shit it's garbage well that's it's like, it's it's feeding your, what the algorithm wants you know what i mean like right i talk all take, the time take your channel for instance how long have you been doing this jesse four years now oh no uh I've been doing the the this the Midgard Musings channel since uh 2017 2018. Yeah, sounds about right. 2017. You know, some somewhere around there. You know, uh, five, five six years. 
You're just now um, 5,000 subscribers just on YouTube, though. On YouTube, you've your other platforms have hit 5,000 since then, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, like you know, Facebook, you know, there's about six and a half or maybe not quite follower, you know, six, okay, a little over 6k. So as, but, yeah. so as you're as you're rolling, though. You're 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 gaining momentum because your quality of your content is getting better. That's why you have subscribers that are sticking around. Yeah, you know, not much for quantity though. You know, it's just that's what matters. Right. Though, is quality upper quantity. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, uh, and and it, and it that 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 mentality for me transfers into the grassroots aspect. You know, um, because I I firmly believe that that heathenry happens at the hearth level, at the ground level, at the grassroots level, in person with people, face to face. And that's where heathen that, the more really thrives. And and when we, you know, I, I posted something the other day about how, you know, you don't communities, tribes, kindreds and stuff, you know, if you're looking to to have something or or build something, is don't look to recruit people. Don't go looking for people. Have a vision, have a purpose live it out, do those things that um, exemplify what you stand for. And then people that are of like minds, that are of similar interests, that want to see that vision come to fruition will be attracted to it. It kind of goes back, like I was thinking about this the other day after I posted, like, I'm like, shit, this happened back in the, was it late 80s, early 90s in that Field of Dreams movie. If you build, build it, it yeah. they will come. Exactly. You yeah. know? Same thing. Like it, 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 that's, it's more, there's more truth than poetry to that, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, build something, but then requires substance. Say that again. Sustenance requires substance. There you go. Yeah. You can't, uh, stay full on air. You know, you have to eat, you have to eat well. Sustenance requires substance. You got to, that value that comes mm -hmm. in. yeah man you got to feed that 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 uh with with nourishing things like you say you know you can't just you know fill up something and 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 take up the real estate and say yep it's full and it's flourishing it could just be a fat meaningless thing with, you with no strength a, you ever been to a wastewater treatment plant that place is full also yeah <laughs> right and, this, <laughs> and it's full of yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah it, yeah it's, that's a great point it's a great point as far as don'ts go uh cliff do you have anything you want to mention as well as uh jesse it's like what don't and as far as the path goes don't be a dick people are <laughs> dicks simple. anymore like when you yeah. ask like when i've seen like when i started and look i I, I would like, I, I like, I found a couple of books, right? And then, and I found a couple of groups and the books and the groups didn't jive. The things that what I was reading and the things that I was seeing online weren't there. Nothing was clicking. And I was like, what? so I'd ask questions. And then you'd have some guys, you know, been, been a heathen for 40 years. And he's like, just being condescending about shit. And I'm like, he wants you to think that he was for 40 years, but really he's probably about as new as you. That's exactly. that's and that's the conclusion that I came to at some point was that you know what the shit this guy's saying, and, and then you know, the more the more information that I gathered and the more knowledge that was consistent across the board, people the shit that they were saying was like these guys that say, you know, they're just being dicks, most of them don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And I have a bad habit of sometimes uh over over speaking about things that i don't know about and when i do i try to retract those at some point you know i'll, I'll go back and apologize for you know what maybe i spoke out of turn on that i didn't quite know what i was saying but some of these folks are just like they're just dicks about yeah. it, you know and but just don't be a dick. Knowledge. if you've acquired all this knowledge and you've got all this experience and you're so seasoned what is so difficult about lending a helping hand to someone in need of it as a newcomer with a simple answer to a simple question, if you know the answer to it? Otherwise, you get that real quick, do your own research, 
<laughs> yeah, right. Well, I think that there's a, I think you there's should, some. You should do your own research, but you could yeah. also answer the question. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's all about delivery, you know, and, and, and you know, you can, you can encourage someone to find the answer themselves by guiding them in that way instead of coming off as like just this kind of and we hear this term often in this you know in in heathenry or or just in other places but we hear this term often gatekeeping i am and and there and and this is another one of those topics where i feel like when it comes back to dogma you know like yeah there, there there are certain things about heathenry that may seem dogmatic in the big scheme of things right like hey there's just certain things you just don't simply do uh but when 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 we talk about gatekeeping like there are some things i think that the the gatekeeper mentality that 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 kicks in is is done when when done or when administered in a holistic sort of way like hey i I don't just want to i just don't want to um feed the masses without them actually getting any sustenance you know what i mean like i want to be able to teach them a skill so that they can feed themselves and then they can teach others to do the same thing and then you know what i mean so it's it's a more of a holistic approach instead of just saying well yeah here's your you know go do your own research and i'm not going to give you trying to be this like guardian of of sacred knowledge that doesn't exist well i don't want to and i don't want to take away from people who that's who they are if you're a dick be a dick that's fine but <laughs> but is it? But, but that, that, and that's and that's well, okay with me. That's okay with me. Like if you're if that guy's a dick, I'm like fuck him. He's a dick. I'll never friend request that dude. Obviously, you know. But because he's a dick. But if you're gonna be a dick, be a wise dick. Okay. <laughs> be like. There's a research. Might I recommend this author? You the, know. Yes. If you're gonna be that guy. Be that guy, but then be who we're all trying to be at the end of the day. You know, somebody who if if you know if you know something then be the guy that guides people somewhere else. If you're going to be a dick about it, then be a dick about it, but be a pleasant dick. All right, well, I will say about it. They do it for power and for clout, I think. think. Yeah. I can only get it. I can only get along with one form, I guess you would call it gatekeeping. That's where there's safety concern. I don't see any reason or any excuse to withhold knowledge or keep knowledge away unless it's for safety's sake and we do that as a parent i'm not going to go teach sure. uh, ilva how to drive a car <laughs> right so i'm right. going to i mean that's it's just from her until she's mature enough and has the motor skills and responsibility to safely operate a motor vehicle <laughs> right sure. sure that's just good parenting that's just res- you know. something i want to say though is um I think it's actually strangely necessary to have those kind of people like the gatekeepers and the buttholes, basically, of the faith that we follow. Because in my hopes is those with earnest intentions and a good heart will come across those people and be like, all right, this is not my place. Good. Yeah. Made the right choice. So it's like yin and yang in a sense. Like we need the buttholes as much as we need the crucial and amazing people like you guys, you know, because without those buttholes and amazing people, the world wouldn't be what it is. Now, I'm not saying I I don't dislike these buttholes because I still don't like them, but they play a necessary role, which I've come to appreciate as far as, you know, people who understand me and my condition and people who don't or a really sunny and beautiful day where a day is just really cloudy and depressing. You got to have one to appreciate the other. Sure. But that's just me. <laughs> it comes back to that balance. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. with, uh, with, with people that, you know, feel like they need to safeguard and I'll use that term, you know, uh, safeguard information or, you know, keep things withheld. Um, that does go back to some pretty um, old school ways of thinking, you know what I mean? Uh, I even e- even in a modern society, you know, like there's even now and today, like if it's proprietary information, 
you know, you could look at it kind of like that. Like if you're not part of this organization or if you're not part of this, if you're not affiliated with this group or this kindred or whatever, then guess what? That knowledge is withheld from you. You don't need to know. In order to safeguard the luck of that, if, you know, we, you, you use the term luck, you know, but it, but whatever, to, to, to maintain the integrity of that group or collective, you know, so there's a place for it. And I think when done correctly and when, when done holistically in that way, I feel it's, it, it, it does serve a purpose and a good purpose. But if you're just literally, you know, trying to just be, a, you know, again, being a jerk for the sake of being a jerk. Yeah. A lot of okay. it, it's your own people when you're doing it with your own community. It comes down to for power or establishing hierarchy or giving yourself a position of power. It's an ego trip. It's a flex. To have yeah. some knowledge that someone else doesn't have and kind of like dangle it over their forehead. Yeah, I mean, when with, with our tribe, you know, like just because I know something that someone else doesn't know, if I find useful information or i learn something then i feel that it behooves me to not share it you know what i mean it, it it would be i would be less of a person i would be i would doing i would be doing an ill service i would be doing a disservice to my tribe and to my people if i were to ignore the opportunity presented by sharing that information you know what i mean what if you, and trying what to if hold you it. forget what if you forget and you haven't told any of your kinsmen your tribesmen and then the situation arises where that knowledge is necessary or it's key to to a to a um to to a um you, you know to a decision amongst the group and when your kinsman is there that you've told this knowledge to it's like hey do you remember this time when we this or that, or, or do you remember that thing you told me that time that would apply to now and it would change your thinking and greatly, um, you know, it could greatly alter, alter the outcome of a group decision. You know, it's, it's, yeah. you know, that's, that's like a, the consequences yeah, of it, your actions. Broadly relative, but narrowly thought. Yeah. The consequences of, of withholding information like that. What if, uh, what if Munin doesn't come back? Mm. You know, man, that's a that's a big question. That's the that's <laughs> the, that's, the, that's the that's the thing that he fears the most, right? Is that, that he loses shit Munin me forever? Sometimes too. <laughs> I get it, it. it bothers all of us. It's it's a yeah. relative. Yeah, we can absolutely. relate to that. It's relatable. Cognitive yeah. abilities versus the things that we remember. Like so much of what so much of our lives, so much of our existence as the species that we are right so much of our human existence is centered around our the memories and and the experiences that we've already gone through we are yeah. who we are now because of what we've done and what has yeah. happened to us exactly. it's sure. shaped us into who we are right the 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 urd shapes verdandi verdandi goes into school you know like the 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 the, the norns like that whole dynamic um that that is so relevant or, or or prevalent with germanic heathens you know that this concept of past present future and and how one feeds into the other and how we're all feeding that that aspect of it you know um what i do today is going to impact the tomorrow and you generations know? to come placed on it in the lore in um text in our stories I think the character's name is Otar. Uh, his ancestral inheritance was being withheld from him. Uh, he was owed a great deal of wealth from his family, but um, he couldn't recall. He couldn't remember his lineage. So he was being denied that. And he makes offerings and offerings and offerings and dedications to Freya, uh, who sees this, uh, takes notice, decides to help him out and the story goes on but he ends up getting a magical potion that helps him remember all those in his line by name and he's able to recite them and therefore get the inheritance that he's owed so that memory yeah hail freya, hail yes, freya, sir. Hail freya. <laughs> and we're recording this on uh, friday <laughs> Freya's largely day. freya's day freak's day i mean linguistically etymologically there's there's connections comparisons to dedication to Freya, my, my mug here <laughs> oh yeah 
I got my horn right here. Yeah. Dedications to the gods. I, uh, we, you know, we were talking about uh, regional practices and, and cultic practices. And have you guys ever heard of, I think I've talked to you about this once, um, once before, at least in, in a conversation one time, Papa, but uh, are, are either one of you guys, Patrick or Cliff, are you familiar with the, uh, the, the Volsa Thotter saga? The what Thotter? Volsa Thotter saga. It's a story. Yeah, it's called the Volsa Thotter. Yeah. I could use a refresher. Uh, so I don't remember all the specifics, but uh, essentially it's it's this uh, the centerpiece of the of the saga revolves around a uh, dried out horse phallus that is kept as an heirloom in the family and they bring it out and they like pass it around at dinner and they like let but pray over it and they they like their their this hearth this home this this family's sacred item was a horse dick <laughs> like a dried up petrified yes horse i palace. remember that from somewhere <laughs> but i don't know why i remember that and so you know you you talk about like individual cultic practices and what might be suitable for some is not suitable for others. I'm like, well, here you go. You got a family in somewhere in Scandinavia that 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 carried around a dried up horse wang, and you know, <laughs> and and, and it was a sacred horse. item for them. You know, now it, it was I have important a friend. <laughs> I have a friend who's who's um, uh, was you know got has not a lot of Native American blood in him from the um, you know American Midwest, and they took. And slaughtered their own buffalo. The, he paid to, you know, he paid to be able to do this. There was a guy, uh, there was a family of people in our area that actually raised buffalo, and he paid to be able to. Uh, he gave that. He he basically paid them for the meat for a buffalo on their property, and he went out there and hunted this buffalo with a bow and arrow and took it with a bow and arrow, oh, just wow. as as a spiritual journey of his. It, and to my knowledge, this guy isn't Norse pagan. He's just I guess you could classify him as heathen. He doesn't really. It was just a spiritual path of his that he was on. Um, he didn't really adhere to any any particular um, name, I guess, as far mm -hmm. as faith goes. But he just wanted to do that one day and was like, I have some money. I'll go pay for this buffalo and see if these people let me hunt one off their property. And he went and did it. He come in through the backside of their property and come in and hunted a buffalo and he took one with a bow and arrow and he used the scrotum as a medicine bag he made a fucking medicine wow. bag out of the bull out of the bull nuts from it <clears throat> and he said this would be an heirloom for all the the men in my family mm. uh, see there that is purpose right there if that if that isn't purpose and this the and these are the kind of people that i was raised around like my my dad had esoteric friends my dad was a biker and he had strange friends we'll, we'll put it like that yeah. or you know so i i grew up around a lot of interesting people which kind of helped me it helps me in my path it, it lets me know that i'm not weird it's everything else around me that's fucking weird right <laughs> normal people or fucking the weird ones right because there's people who go out and do shit like this on a whim like and 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 they're perfectly normal people, you know. As far as in my eyes, are perfectly normal people. Yeah, it's a relative terms. You know what is what is normal for the is normal? spider is chaos for the fly. It's... You know, th this guy felt detached from. Um, he just felt detached. So to get reattached to his inner purpose, his inner being, and his inner spiritualism, he went and hunted a buffalo, no. and he took the fucker with a uh, with a bow and arrow. And he used every bit of, used every bit of, he just finished his cabin in the woods and he had a family wife and, and, and a few kids. And he, the Buffalo, the Buffalo skull still hangs on the front of the cabin and wow. he still wears the scrotum around his neck. Like um, the unfortunate part about that story is, is he declared that he'd give it to his son and he had nothing but daughters. Mm-hmm. No. so but he does have grandsons so yeah you know that'll be passed on i'm sure the story that fantastic story will will be passed on to his grandson 
whether he whether he accepts it and 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 accepts his uh tribal duty of holding his grandfather's you know story you know that's up to him but you know that's yeah to me in my book that's even you know well that's that 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 was definitely a part of of their traditions you know what i mean so the label the name that we put to to our beliefs or whatever yes heathenry usually gets the that's where the the the, the mark usually hits is is heathenry right. but th those those types of things uh exist in other cultures around the world outside of just germanic cultures it's it's a it's a common theme yeah. you know um with the way that our tribe has has developed and grown you know so much of the way that relationships have have built and developed over the years um you know papa olafson here has 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 crafted items for clearly folk for our tribe you know so our drum which is right over here um behind me and you can't really see it but there's a a, a hammer rattle you know these are these are not mine they don't belong to me they belong to the tribe they are tribal relics they are they are things that will become items that get passed down for the tribe as it as its inception grows you know what i mean so so the next inception of the really folk when i'm not here and when you know ulf or patrick or others that are a part of the tribe aren't here uh physically you know the really folk will continue and those items will become passed down to the successors and into the to the next ones the next generation that's fantastic that's fantastic you know? that's what I love that's it. those are the dues you know the dues yeah those are the dues. Those are absolutely the dues. for sure but uh this was a great podcast guys i know we could probably reach and and sure. talk hours on and hours and hours and hours but we've already <laughs> we've already gone uh the distance I wasn't, here i wasn't sure if papa fell asleep over there or not it doesn't look like he's asleep but... no, he just gets into the like if, you, if you're just like looking on screen you know for those that don't watch the podcast or, or see mm -hmm. what we see in terms of like the overall participant view um papa has been known to just sort of become so still in the frame that people think that his camera glitched and he's like frozen <laughs> in time it's like he just kind of <laughs> I love it. i've seen him do this on inner demon with sid and i've seen him do it with you like he just goes someplace and he, and he just has this stillness about him i'm like man that's yep. badass yep. Did he, is he asleep <laughs> he's just he's thinking out of sleep he's that's just thinking his way through some stuff right present. living in the moment right yes experiencing the moment I and, practice this when I'm in the, the woods also. And just earlier today while practicing this, just sitting still, listening, taking it all in. Um, I got the opportunity to encounter a little fox uh, that ran right across a log behind me. And that's special. Kind of went Very down. special. Very special. So I was sitting there taking it in. I started getting huffed at by, it was probably a two or three year old doe. Um, it's not the the lady of the group there are probably 15 to 20 deer in this herd and i went out to where they were at i like to follow them around a little bit see what they're eating see what they're munching on what mushrooms are coming up right now what the forest is doing and so i sat there and she decided to be very bold and again she's not the leader she was a younger doe but decided to huff at me a little bit stomp at me a little bit and start to approach me so while I'm sitting there taking it all in, I decide to try to get this on video, record it. And as I'm recording her, I hear something off to my side and I turn and here comes this fox across a log. And I just ran right beside me down the log, didn't see me, didn't know that I was there, didn't see me recording or anything. And then got down and got downwind of me smelled and turned around saw me and then kind of scampered off a little bit <laughs> that's fantastic i love it i saw something that um i think most of us people here know uh, cody cody schaefer um elder Vak, right i think that's the his, his musical project yeah that's right um 
he has his uh, sacred wolf divination crafting shop and um he he shares a lot of really neat things and i saw something that he shared today and it papa what you were saying um and describing what you experienced today and just the whole stoic or stillness um it was it was something that he had shared today and it and it, and it resonates and, and it was something along the lines of you know turn off your phone put it down disconnect in that way stop and be still and listen to the unread messages that are being sent to you from the universe so you can't you, you can't absorb those things if you're mm. too busy scrolling or trying to capture everything in the moment like you know what sometimes those moments are just for you forget mm -hmm. about trying to retain yeah. it forget about trying to capture it and share it and, and get some sort of response from the world because as as useful and as beneficial and as helpful as those sorts of things can be uh sometimes you just need that for you and embrace that and and take that moment in and just stop be still right embrace that isa that ice that 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 pause before the next thing and wait and see what you receive from the world around you Absolutely. sometimes your sometimes your fish stories should be fish stories mm. instead of you know facebook posts yep, yep. Yeah. Five, eight, I, I noticed eight. papa made uh he, he made comment about that like twice in the last couple of days I watched the uh, Inner Demon podcast, and he made mention of something similar to that. And then, and then on a post on his page today, I think it was about uh, along those lines of just kind of like, uh, like it was it was about the uh, people searching for their for their um, their spirit animal or their you know their calling their their sign. People searching for their sign. Oh uh, yeah. And, so many people are so many people are you know doing this and they miss they miss all their signs you know they miss all their colors our ego our ego gets in the way and tells us that we decide what is going to be a sign what we consider a yes. sign what we're going to was... accept as a sign and all the while we're getting them and we're shitting on them we're passing them by and missing all that communication because our ego is in the way telling us only this is the sign because i decided that that's what's assigned to me yeah R papa was it you did you share something about uh and this may be the same post that cliff is talking about but did you was it you that shared something about there, there it was animistic it was it was like a crow and something else yeah crow, right. crow. do you have that available like can you like recite that can you share that is that something on your mind that you would be willing to i can to express because I feel like that was a really important message, you know, and for the listeners and 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 whatnot, if you're willing and able to to convey great that. Because I saw something poem. while you're looking for it, man. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna. I, I saw something else um, recently, and I, and I'm foggy a bit on the details because I have to go back and look for it. I was it was kind of one of those moments where I go down this rabbit hole of information and I see so many things, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That that's that's relevant. And I saw. A, like a story where uh it was it was again animistic in nature and it was um like the fox and the robin or something like that the robin bird you know what i mean um and uh the fox the robin and the crow or or, or something there was like there were three animals and it was there was a story about uh you know how how this 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 bird i don't forget it was the robin or the crow but he was he was chirping you know he was he was sorry my screaming bad. his voice you know what i mean screaming his voice he was singing a song he was doing his thing and uh you know the fox would would uh, went to them and uh uh it was like they were they were trying to get an answer about about things and they didn't get the answer that they were looking for because they weren't listening to what was being said and what the what the what the other bird or what the other animal was trying to say was i i've, I've lost my friend i i I'm, I'm sad about this i'm trying to tell you this 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 sad story of mine i'm trying to connect with you in this way and then because this other animal was or this other figure this other spirit being was was thinking along a different line it was they they weren't receiving that message they were they were too self-centered they were too self-focused then to, to to stop and listen to what that message that was trying to be conveyed to them was telling them 
something along those lines. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Pop, if you got that. All right. That I didn't, um, if I'm going to recite this poem, I'm going to do it right. Do it right, sir. Oh, shit. <laughs> we got to turn the lights down. We got to, we got to, do we need to unbutton our shirts a little bit? Do we need to let our hair down? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> There we go. On missing those signs and the ego, this was just a, a small poem that I had written after giving that example the other night um, on the dangers of deciding for yourself uh, what communications you're going to accept or uh, receive. So I called this uh, waiting on a sign. I went to the forest to wait for a sign, Red Robin's song so sweet and refined. Softly, I walked down Robin's wood way, listening for Robin with something to say. Crow started shouting. It was all I could hear. Robin's song would be missed. Now I did fear. Angry at Crow, I left with a pace. Crow noticed my change and quickly gave chase. Back through the forest, back up the way, I thought to myself, what a waste of today. I wished to hear Robin, but Crow called instead. Not listening, Crow had been crying. My friend Robin is dead. Again, I returned for Robin's sweet song, still angry at Crow and how I was done wrong. Crow keeps on calling no matter which time, so I'm still waiting on Robin, for that is my sign. Wow. That's good. So that I feel good. stupid because you just told the story that I was trying to convey, but it was it, I, I did it very poorly, so thank you for... Keep me honest there. That's what I was thinking. I saw it was you. It was you, Papa. That was the story that I was well writ. Well yeah. writ, my friend. Yeah. Well writ. Indeed. But it does, man. Like that. Uh, yeah, that that's that's it, man. Like that's it speaks to how much time we waste when we try to decide for ourselves what's a sign. And if we would have been open to the communication that was there to us, we would have known that we're not going to hear the Robin. But I still keep going back, keep going back, keep going back because I'm missing the communication that's meant for me because I've decided that the only sign that is for me is that Robin song. Hmm. So I'm forever wasting my days on this sign that I could have learned from day one wasn't going to be there. And I feel like that's a point that's very um, important for not just us partaking of this um, podcast, but also those of you for watching and partaking, you know, seize that moment, seize that opportunity. You know, it may not be as uh, grand of an experience that we're anticipating, but it's important. You know, sometimes that crow will be this big. Sometimes that crow will be this big. It's important to pay mind if we're missing something. More often than not, it's right in front of us. That's a that's my wife's analogy to what we are doing here, like our purpose in life. Um, she she tells she's told me on numerous occasions that it's that that we're here to. We have to come back and do this every time until we till we listen to the crow, you know what I'm saying? To to kind of to kind of go piggyback off Papa's poem, um, you know, the 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 signs that we're meant to see and the changes that we're meant to make in ourselves. If we don't make those in this lifetime, we'll be back to do it again. That's her. That's her outlook on on the uh, reincarnate theories mm. and the and just the the ideology in general of 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 what happens when we die if we've if we've decided or if we've understood or if we've heard our message whether we were looking for it or not if we've listened and we've and we've heard it then we're okay to go to the next the next level right and if not if we're looking for the red bird you know the cardinal um and and we've not been hearing the crow then we'll be back exactly hmm. 
I would like to give one last piece on what do uh, practicing heathens do before we close out. And it's something that weighs heavy on me all the time. And it's something that I try to convey as much as possible, as often as possible. What do practicing heathens do? Um, what works for them? Those that are getting benefit out of their practice do what works for them. It's great to get ideas from other people in practice on um, their rituals or the things that they incorporate, but it has to work for you. If it doesn't work for you, there's no point. If you want to model your practice after mine, and I tell you, I get up every morning at 7 a.m. and I go outside for morning prayer, but you're due at work at 7 a.m. to clock in or you're going to be late, then it obviously doesn't work. Right. You have to do what works for you or you're going to be missing it. It's not going to be wholesome. It's not going to be beneficial to your practice. I, um, I learned a thing about the, the, the herder and something that, something that I kind of, I don't know if it's a thing or if I implemented it myself, but I don't recall ever hearing anything about the herder where, where, where you take stones from um, a relative's herder when you create your own. I, I was actually thinking about this earlier today because it was it was only like maybe two years ago that I first heard of the her the herder the pile the herder is a pile of stones where you where you would hold your blot you sprinkle with blood you leave your offerings for whether it be for blots only or for um, weekly like myself my my thing that I do weekly I honor my land bit there. So I go out to my herd gutter and I take an offering of grains and, and sometimes fruits and berries and stuff. And sometimes meads, depending on if, if the, uh, um, if, if the, the day that I've chosen to do it on, which is normally Saturday for me, it's a pretty mellow day. I don't have to be at work. I'll get up fairly early on a Saturday, um, for my work week. And I go out and I take my, my oatmeal and I take, you know, uh, some berries and if it's a full moon happens to be a full moon that day i'll go ahead and take some mead too to kind of expand on the offering that i'm giving and i try to do it on a weekly basis i don't know whether that's something that i just feel like i need to do or if it comes from having you know christian influences involved but um it's something that uh, that i intentionally do on saturday and that's part of my my path uh that's part yeah, that's, of how that's, I heathen. That's yeah. how that that's your what I like to recall is individual <clears throat> cultic practices. Yeah. Doesn't have to be heathen. It's 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 how you do your thing, and that's your cultic practice. And Papa's it, is his, yours is yours, Patrick's is his, mine is mine. Right. You know? I don't I don't I don't get to go out to the I don't have the luxury of getting to go out to the woods like on a daily basis or even weekly basis. I have I have a bunch of kids and we're, you know, we got, I've got older kids. We're in baseball. I've got a new baby at home. Like, oh, yeah. I'm got freaking busy. <laughs> I am busy, but I've got, I, I have 15, 20 minutes on Saturday morning that I can go do that. And those 15, 20 minutes would before anyone else in the house is awake is when I go do that. Now, when I do my blocks, of course, it's of an evening time. And my, my kids have been getting involved in those. They're like, they're curious. They're like, dad, what are you doing? So I tell, I sit them down. I tell them a story. I explain what I'm doing. And it's really neat because when you get to do stuff like that and your kids start to become interested in stuff like that, they start to pick up little things. Hell yeah, man. <clears throat> and, and I'm not, I'm not like big on runes. Like I'm not, I, I don't, I'm a baby with runes. Like I, I, I don't really, uh, I'm not super proficient in the runes, but I still, I, I look at them. I feel them. I touch them. I read on them. I do stuff, you know, to try to learn the runes. I'm trying to learn the runes. My youngest son probably knows more about the runes than I do because he comes out and he tells me that's the B room, dad. That means, you know, birch tree. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> very, very good. You know, 
very good son because he comes out and he asks me questions and i tell him stuff so you know that's that's how i eat i'm not raising my christian my kids to be christian but i'm also not raising them that christianity is bad because they hear you know stories about jesus and whatever whatever but you know so to kind well of you're not that, forcing i thought it doesn't sound like you're forcing your beliefs on even your own family and you're 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 living it out in your hearth which is sovereign and which is sacred to you and those within the sanctity of and the confines of of your inner yard uh are exposed to your cultic practices and so it it's natural to be inquisitive and to explore and to learn and that's the beauty of it, it i there, think exposure i think exposure causes normalcy and when you get that normalcy of exposure you get uh, more of a free thinking society or even more of a free thinking thought process about things you know and that's kind of what i'm trying to do with my with my inner heart here you know with my inning guard with my little family that i have is that's trying what you should to, do trying to get them to think along that thought process you know well, exposure instigates understanding and understanding is the key to all things yes could agree more and that's something um not to tie off from what papa was saying i hope he continues after i do but um <laughs> my last thoughts in this awesome podcast being among amazing men those of you watching who may be new i speak to you you're among great people great men and i really smile hard when jesse had this podcast i'm like man it's been a great opportunity and then me and cliff and papa we seized the opportunity we took it you know anyways i hope that you are like me a rebel in it all but soaking up everything you hear and have heard replay if necessary but um this is really special about this path and this practice is being among your special book your special folk and even if you don't have those people readily available like distance wise they're out there whether they may live three hours from you five hours from you eight hours from you 12 hours those people are there in spirit most of the four of us were in three different time zones i believe i am reading 825 my time yeah, you we're we're uh we're we're across two different time zones, gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I got nine thirty. I got yeah. nine thirty. <laughs> it feels like three different time zones. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the sake of of everybody participating right now, um, I feel like we've we've done a very good job of touching on the topic um at hand. The last thing I just want to say is russell you know you had posted this comment in uh the midgard musings facebook page and the last thing you said was that you'd love to be able to refer someone who is asking your you know the questions that you posed to an episode of the podcast because you don't always have the time yourself to go in depth with these questions you see how in depth we went in the last hour or two well, at this point, you know, a couple hours, right? The time evades us and we've barely really even scratched the surface, but hopefully what we've collectively been able to share is that um, there's nobody really that can tell you how, what, what, what heathens as a, as a overall collective, what do practicing heathens do? You heard so many things about what four different practicing heathens do or, or, or people that have come in touch with their spirituality do and so for anybody that comes to this episode that that is looking for how to do your thing hopefully the message that is ringing and resonating loud and clear is you know how do you practice your heathenry figure it out find your way as papa you know? said in the beginning there's no book that's the beauty of it there's it's that's the beauty of it there's no set rules there's parameters but there's no set rules there's no book there's no 
develop your tradition, develop your customs, develop your traditions, develop your, what we call sometimes Thu, you know, mm -hmm. and Thu is ever, ever growing. It doesn't, it's not static. It, it's kinetic. It grows, it moves, it evolves, you know. And um, also don't follow blindly. Follow this analogy. But spaghetti is spaghetti, but you're going to be hard pressed to find any two people in the world that make spaghetti exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Every, like, oh, even if you get it from your grandma, you're going to tweak it just a little bit and there's going to be an extra pinch of oregano or a little bit less parsley or something that's going to make it your own because that's what suits your flavor palette. That's what works for you in your kitchen. Yes. It's spaghetti across the board. Everybody around the world eats it, but yours is yours. <laughs> Season your sauce to the way your exactly taste. Exactly right. Take Papa care. always says awesome. some shit that sparks a childhood memory with me. I don't know how he does it. It's fucking funny. I'll have to tell you guys a story about that sometime. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's been a but, pleasure being here, though, for sure. It has. Um, and I hope everybody that's been, you know, that that's here listening and watching um, when this premieres and when this is out here, that you have taken something of value away mm -hmm. from all this. I, sh I sure have. Um, so for you know cliff patrick and 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 papa uh i'd like to extend my very special thanks to you gentlemen for being available and and wanting to come on here and and rap a bit about it and and uh share your respective insights knowledge and and experiences don't go anywhere because i do want to just say something to you guys offline off the podcast um but for everybody else outside that is uh listened and watched this this episode um, thank you so much. Be sure to check the description and show notes of this podcast for the link to the High Lung Group that that Patrick and uh, Cliff help run, and and Fjallvatir that that is you know associated with with Papa Olafson here. Um, there's going to be all that information linked down in the description and show notes of this podcast. So do be sure to check all of that out and support these guys <laughs> in any way that you can. And uh, until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. And thank you all so much. <sighs>